All right, guys, got another workday in the books. Happy to be home, happy to be talking to you guys about whitetails. We've got another installment of Whitetail Wednesday. Last week we talked about marsh scouting efficiency. Now this week we're gonna build off that, talk about hill country scouting efficiency. Like I said, these are just mocked up maps of private land chunks. I don't wanna give up public land uh, hunting spots. Just feel like it's the right thing to do and the ethical thing to do. Because uh, it's tough enough on public land, so without further ado, let's hop into this uh, map here. Got a piece of public land, uh, mark those up in the purple, and every point of interest I marked in the red X. So let's get into the property and how we can break it down. So as we head to this north parking spot, that's where we would be starting. Uh, First point of interest is actually right, be, right behind the farm here. Um, we're gonna pretend this is just a parking lot, like I said. And there's a little watering hole that caught my eye, along with kind of a little pinch point right here with some mixed uh, grass in there. Um, good mixture of habitat. Could be an overlooked spot if that were a piece of public land right next to the parking lot. So we move south here. Um, the reason I mark this point, potentially, um, I notice like the CRP type areas sometimes hold apple trees and that can be a main draw. You might have some deer better off this point for early season if these apple trees are holding. So that's the only reason I would check that out at that point. I'd just double check to make sure um, there's this food source there, uh, a potential food source there of the apple tree for early season. Then we cut over to the east here um, and check out this point right here. Uh, the reason I like this area, you noticed I marked a lot of points in this area, because this could be a potential thermal hub bedding type of area where the, the wind would swirl a lot in this area, which would lead to potential bedding off these points. So this would be the first point I would check in that. It would be a higher thermal hub than your typical lower thermal hub, potentially. Just the way it looks, uh, it just, just sets up for a high, higher thermal hub. Um, reason I like this little area is because could see some potential rut, rut cruising through here. You got this field to pinch them down, you got this cut right here. Could definitely see them running this, especially since the primary slope here is a north facing slope or is a south facing slope, sorry, and you get the north wind over the top and you get that leeward cruising where they can just hit up this entire ridge system. Then uh, we move over to the east here, or toward the west, sorry. Um, I really like the looks of this long ridge here. If you got a west wind, they could be cruising this all freaking day, or they could just cruise this, then hop over and start cruising, cruising that east facing ridge. And another reason I like this is I don't think a lot of guys are willing to hunt on property edges and I would set up right on that property edge. And it's one of the more remote bedding points on this property where does could be bedding in these woods, bucks could be cruising this way on a west wind or this way on a north wind. So it'd be a potential good setup there. Um, Another feature I like back here, there's a big bench right here, really big bench. It gets really tight up here um, in terms of uh, line gradient and uh, a lot of lines right here in terms of line gradient and a uh, really good bench right here that stuck out just in case these deer are pushed down because a lot of pressure is coming up from the tops on this particular piece. Uh, then we head down off that bench into this uh, potential lower thermal hub. So we might have a higher thermal hub and lower thermal hub on this piece. Uh, I can just tell that just based off my experience of hunting in hills. So we shoot over here. We head south to another point. Um, just another potential point that is uh, pretty one of the more remote uh, bedding points on this property. That's the reason I like it. Then we head over here. Um, got a nice cut. This might be a east wind right, rut type setup where they, they run this, shoot over, run that, 
run the opposite ridge. It's a big ridge system that they can hop up on. And another reason I like it, there's quite a bit of habitat diversity coming in here. Um, you got a little saddle, then you have a CRP type field, then you have this cut. They all meet in that area. That's the reason that caught my eye. And uh, might be like a bedding point slash uh, doe bedding up on top, depending on how thick it is. Based off the satellite imagery, I don't think it'd be very thick, but you never you know, you gotta check it out. So then we had east here, and uh, we're gonna be checking out the CRP field. Checking these shrubs for bedding. I notice a lot of big bucks like to bed in those CRP fields. Um, you can even see the deer trails here um, where they're bedding on those trees. And uh, I'd be checking out this point along with all the different shrubs in this area. Um, they might pick one suitable shrub area where they're bedding and they can overlook this entire CRP field. And that's more of a visual bed. Um, then we got this little notch that sticks out, uh, might hold an apple tree, might hold an oak tree, where they can run that up into this field, um, to, you know, feed or check on does, whatever they're going to do. I uh, like this area, you got a little bench over here, nice point um, for the, the bucks to bet on, um, po potentially just downwind of the CRP field. We run this over, we'd stay on this trail. Check out this cut, got some habitat types coming together. Um, see if they're running that deer in rut. Head over here. Like I said, this entire area can be a potential good bedding point for those deer if it's a high thermal hub type area. Uh, along with having a bunch of habitat types coming together. You have the bedding points obviously. You have a pond right here. You have this pond um dam that they can run during the rut you got uh these pines which might be a little bit thicker for doe bedding um where those bucks can you know cruise downwind to those pines or catch those doe trails heading back to bedding in those pines um same thing right here a lot of habitat types coming together got this knob where they can overlook the valley below same thing over here same thing over here <laughs> um along with habitat types. I mean, how many habitat types do you have over here? You got the hardwoods right here, water, pines, um, you got a CRP field over here, you got some kinda, looks like some opener type hardwoods right there. So a lot of stuff coming together up here. Even though it's a little bit a easier access, that might be a good spot to to catch, a, a, catch some deer. Um, that isn't very hard. That'd probably be a spot I'd bring newer hunters right there. Probably gonna be seeing some deer there and it's not a very far walk. Um, then we head up to the east here and this might be some overlooked type hunting area. Uh, you got some really thick CRP type stuff going on right here. You got a pinch point which is going on to some private land over here uh, where you might be able to catch some bucks cruising here on a south wind hitting this pinch point, they can go that way, cruise this fence row, or they can head to the south and hop on that public. So it might be a good potential, along with a potential thermal hub set up down here, um, if you get the right ones or whatever, where they're cutting across. Um, then we head towards this little island of trees right here. You can see bucks bedded in this little island of trees, monitoring this parking area. Somewhere in our park here, bucks bed here, and they'd head off to escape cover to a, a different point or head in up this ditch or something like that to escape from uh, hunting pressure. Um, hopefully this little uh, map help you guys out. Um, so basically just start at one parking area and hit up every single point of interest and uh, have a guy park at the other end over here or uh, what you could do as well is just do a big loop and head back to the to the bedding area over here, run this, and yeah, go to that parking area. Hopefully this helped. <clears throat> like I said, hopefully this uh, helps you guys out with being efficient scouting in hill country. Um, for some guys it may be common sense, but these videos are more for your newer hunters, so 
Appreciate you guys watching. Next week we'll be diving into big woods. And if you guys have any tips to scout marshes or, or hill country, uh, don't be afraid to comment below. We appreciate all, uh, all ideas and all uh, criticism. So you guys have a good night and we'll see you guys next Wednesday. Thanks.